Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We are now turning to a little poem called A Farm Picture. This is poem 15 of the 29 of By the Roadside. Um, you'll remember a number of times that we have said that when we look at the poetry of Walt Whitman, we're reminded of that little mantra that we always will teach in a creative writing course, good poets will often t show instead of tell. And here we're going to see an example of that, but I'm going to make the argument, and this is why I disagree with a lot of thinkers and the scholars who say, these are the kind of uh, poems that I don't know why they got uh, you know, put in uh, Leaves of Grass. There, there should have been a stronger editor, a critic, a critic that would get rid of these kinds of poems in Leaves of Grass. But I'm going to argue that, no, I think there's something really important, and dare I even say it, profound about a little poem like this. I'll see what I can do to, to show that. In other words, can I say it this way? Whitman is one of those poets that I think can show us and at the same time tell us something important and inform us. Now, the assumptions are that you've been with us at LearnStrong.net. Um, uh, down that left-hand side, Talks with Walt, we're calling our playlist. And my hope is that you've been with us all the way from the very beginning and inscriptions up through and including an introductory set of co uh, comments for uh, By the Roadside. And we just finished with Roaming. And now we will uh, turn to uh, this little picture. Norton's will uh, tell us <clears throat> that this was only the first two lines that comprised this poem when it appeared in 1865. And in the Leaves of Grass 67 annex is one of the drum taps poems. Of course, we're going to get to drum taps here in a few minutes. In Leaves of Grass 1871 and 1876, it was ungrouped, and then in, finally 1881, it was given its present position. And I want to remind you already that we've been playing around with the idea of farming, communals, uh, far out into the rural area. Of course, for Whitman, he lived, grew up around these kinds of uh, farms and that kind of thing. And then, of course, we'd spend quite a bit of time in the cities, uh, uh, of course, predominantly New York City, although briefly in New Orleans. Um, but do you remember some of these lines, like from me and Paterb, remember a man of the woods of any farm life will remember song of the answer, remember uh, to the cities and farms I sing spread in the sunshine before me. And that distinction between cities and farms is one that I want you to hold in your, in your mind for a few moments. Do you remember in our old fuelage, he says in the farmer's barns, oxen in the stable, he's creating that image. And then finally in spontaneous me, he uses the word picture this way. The real poems, what we call poems being merely pictures. I want to play that game out now um, as we look at this little uh, poem, a farm picture. Through the ample open door of the peaceful country barn, a sunlit pasture field with cattles and horses feeding, and haze and vista and the far horizon fading away. There is a, a really beautiful melodic kind of rhythm to this. No notice here it again in that opening line, through the ample open door of the peaceful country barn. It's almost impossible to not read that with almost getting a sense of almost like a lyric of a kind. A sunlit pasture field with cattle and horses feeding. By the way, notice all these sounds, the open sounds, the open door, the country barn, the word ample, the word sunlit. Notice drawing this picture of a beautiful bucolic pastoral, can we say that, pastoral scene. Beautiful in every way. And of course, we live where we get to see something like this all the time. So it makes sense that we would look at this and say, yeah, 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 totally. I, I totally get it. It's like something we would see at Hyattville um, uh, as, we, as we go out into the countryside outside of our town. And then the third line, which for me makes this such a compelling little poem. He uses the word haze, which will take us back, of course, to Crossing Brooklyn Ferry, Passage 3, haze on the hills. That is to say it's not quite clear. And Vista, which will obviously take us to Song of Myself, Passage uh, 46, where he will say, I stand on the knoll as the teacher with the student, and we kind of point out to the road, uh, the, the, oh, the, uh, uh, the road that's out there, that what will later be the open road. A haze and vista and the far horizon fading away. Believe it or not, this is the only time in all leaves of grass that the phrase fading away is used. Now, I find that compelling, and here's why. I think that Whitman is on to something here. I think that this is not just a little uh, kind of drawing the picture, 
of the beauty of farm life and the hills which will give the sense of a certain kind of isolation. I think instead that to uh, marry to the text that we'll be following at Child's Amaze, I think that Whitman is acutely aware that something fundamentally is shifting in American life. I think he's beginning to realize there are things that are gained, but there are also things that are lost. And I think that's why fading away is being mentioned here as it is. What exactly is it that he's suggesting? Well, I think he's arguing that the ample open door and the peaceful country barn and the sunlit pasture field and the cattle and the horses feeding, I think all of that, he realizes, on the horizon is soon to fade away, to be replaced by what? Well, what he's always juxtaposing, the country, the rural, with, of course, the urban and the urbane, the city. In other words, I think he realizes that this farm picture is something that will quickly become part of the Norman Rockwell framed America, as, of course, we today understand it. We look at a poem like this and we say, you know, it's interesting the way that Whitman was very prophetic. He kind of started to see that the agrarian simple life, that, of course, Jefferson, his hero, Thomas Jefferson, had celebrated so much as being central to what it means to be an American, was soon to begin to pass away. And if not pass away, fading away is his term, it certainly is going to be altered and changed in some very dramatic ways. And of course, we saw this through the late 70s and 80s as farming in Nebraska and Iowa and elsewhere began to really struggle, tragically struggle, and we watched so much pain and heartache as the farming, the agrarian life was, of course, beginning to change. I think that Whitman is making an observation that the country, the simple life, the life that he grew up with, is maybe fading away, and I'm not sure that I'm not sure he's so happy about that as as, as he looks at it. At two B, um, I'm going to ask how you interpret this poem as either being positive or negative. Some of you will say, "Well, the first two lines were very positive, and now you're challenging me to read this poem at a different kind of level," which I think Whitman would be pleased with. Word choice matters in so much of reading Leaves of Grass. Obviously, uh, the the choice of haze, and obviously the phrase fading away. Um, at three A, and how I relate. Obviously, so much of, uh, of this interpretation will take us on to Frost. And I think Frost was very influenced by poems like this. I do. I would just ca uh, um, consider, for example, Frost's little, uh, uh, little poem called Out, Out. I've given a full lecture on it at LearnStrong.net. I've given a lecture on a number of Frost's poems. Go and take a look at Out, Out and just get a sense of what really it is, the game that he's playing there. I think that's one of the more remarkable little poems of Frost. And I think, it, I think it builds rather nicely with this one. Finally, at 3B, it's kind of a self-evident question. Where do you come down on this idea that the simple life, the country life, the agrarian life is somehow fading away? And, and, and in what ways is it fading away uh, for you? So I, I will challenge you to give some consideration to that. But a little tiny poem, what a diamond, what a jewel. Thank you.